Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the newest flying kayak flying vlog. Today I've got a kind of interesting airplane for you, the Polaris Amphib, with FIB standing for flying inflatable boat. You heard me right, this is a flying inflatable boat. And this actually does exist in the real world. What you're seeing on screen is the model by V Sky Labs, a simulation producer who creates some really high fidelity general aviation aircraft and some really interesting ones as well. I think all of his airplanes have a kind of special thing about them that makes them unique and sets them apart from other general aviation airplanes and this one is no different. The Polaris Amphib is produced by the Polaris Motor Company in Italy and is a single engine ultralight trike with a inflatable boat strapped to the bottom with an approximately 60 horsepower twin cylinder Rotax engine. It's capable of cruising at about 50 knots and it can fly as slow as 26, making it the optimal bush plane and a great cruiser for when you're trying to get into places that other airplanes frankly could never reach. Now, I first heard of this plane when I heard about the Ascend the Nile expedition, which is, by the way, a very interesting expedition to travel the Nile all the way from the ocean to its source. I believe it took place in 2006, if I remember correctly. And one of the amazing pieces of kit that these people took with them on their journey was the Polaris Amphib. There is a version with only a tricycle landing gear and there is a version with only the inflatable boat known as the Polaris Fib, flying inflatable boat without the Am for amphibian in front of it. And this is really a fun little airplane and I think it's more than amazing that someone actually created this aircraft as a model in X-Plane 11. Now the airport you're currently seeing in the background is Quatam River Airport by PropStrike Studios and I have kind of an idea of what I'm going to do today. I think I'm going to go ahead, start the engine, and then we're going to fly, we're going to try and land this airplane on water, which is what it's designed for, and then we're going to try and land it on one of the shortest landing strips I know of in X-Plane 11, and we'll see how well it does with that challenge. So I'll be right back with you and we'll meet each other once we're in the cockpit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the cockpit of the Polaris Amphib, and yeah, as you can see, it's a really simple ultralight trike. It's only got like this small cell phone app display, which is really cool. I really like the fact that this is added into a lot of the airplanes that V-Sky Labs produced that wouldn't otherwise have a lot of instruments. But you don't really need this as, well, you'll probably hear the airspeed and stuff with your ears after a few hours of flying the Polaris Amphib. It's really well designed, I think, by V-Sky Labs. I really enjoy this airplane, it's fun. And most of the features of this airplane are basically toggle, bubble, using click spots, which probably also makes it great in VR. I don't own a VR headset, so I can't test it, but I believe V-Sky Labs advertises it as VR capable, and I can very well believe that that's the case. You've got like this left click spot for brakes, and it shows up here. You can also just click here to engage or disengage the brakes. And we've got a right click spot for the landing gear, which I'm not going to test out as we are on the ground. And, well, I don't want to retract my landing gear while we're on the ground, but I'll show you that click spot once we are in the air. For now, I'm just going to release the brakes and add some power. I'm going to show you the engine sounds later on, which are really well done as well. Just kind of try and be nice and slow. Ground speed of 10 knots. It's a bit fast for a taxi already. So this airplane does accelerate fairly quickly, it's a really simple to fly one though, it's really cool, and yeah, it does have a very short takeoff distance, so we're just going to kind of taxi up to the back there and then kind of, yeah, take off. See Quatam River Airport here with the helipad over there, that's actually, it's a really cool looking airport and I selected kind of the morning hour because I really enjoy flying in the mornings, it's, it's just kind of fun. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we made it to the end of the runway here at Quatam River Airport, and we're now sitting on runway 27, and we're ready for departure. So in just about a few seconds, I'm going to add full power, and we'll see how short we can actually take off. She is capable of an amazingly short takeoff run, and I'm really interested in seeing 
how short we can actually get this. All right, just gonna slowly add in power. And there we go, maximum power, 26 knots, 30 knots, and we're climbing. Wow, that's amazing. That was super, super short. I mean, look at that, we're climbing like a rocket and we're already above the trees and over Quantum River Airport, even though we haven't even passed half the runway probably at the point that we actually climbed above the trees. So that's, that's really amazing. Don't want to climb too much now, so I'm just going to kind of reduce that power a bit. There we are. It's working. Maintaining level flight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and retract the landing gear now. Did reduce a bit of drag. And yeah. There we are. Flying around the Quadam River Valley in a Polaris flying inflatable boat. That's Really fun, really amazing. Wow, look at that. You've kind of got this morning fogginess lying over the river there. Wow, this looks beautiful. Alright. So this is pretty fun. Let's see if we can go ahead and land this aircraft on the water. I'm just going to make a left turn here. You can see the airfield down there. That's where we started out. You can see the banks here, the river delta, Quadam River, going into this kind of sound here. That's really cool. And I'm going to idle my throttles and start my descent. Now my landing gear is retracted, and once my landing gear is retracted, it does kind of extend this little water rudder down there, which it uses to navigate the water, we'll see that later. Don't even know if this aircraft has pitch trim. Can we pitch trim it? Seems like we can actually. Or was that just a stall? Yeah, I believe we did stall a bit here. Kind of turn back and we'll see if we can land parallel to the beach. There you are, that's kind of where the beach is. Turning into this sort of semi-base. She really does glide very well, this airplane. And... That turn. And there's the water surface. It's coming real close. And we're down. That's amazing. That was a fairly short landing. I probably shouldn't have made any turns that low because we do have pretty glassy waters. And I'm turning here. That's actually really cool. Yeah, she is very well to be steered on water. I really like that with that water rudder. It does work pretty awesome. And if this were the real world, we could just kind of drive up here. Drive up at some point. I'd push the corresponding click spot and just taxi up on land with my gear now extended yep we have now left the water and we are taxied up onto the land not too bad at all oh look you can see the reflection of the aircraft here. That's really cool. I love the way that this beach is kind of designed. Alright, but that's enough of admiring. I'm going to go ahead and turn back here and go back into the water, track the landing gear again, open up the throttles and just accelerate a bit. 24, 25, 6, 27, and we're climbing. There you are. Wow, this looks really amazing.
Look at that landing gear, that's really awesome. Alright. So I am going to go ahead and retract, extend the landing gear, sorry. Because I've got something planned now. I'm going to land this on one of the shortest landing strips available in this game. Well, I'm going to try at least. Let's see how well that actually works out. But, if we don't try, we'll never see. Alright. Idle. And... I'm going to start to power this descent. Maybe we'll have to go around again. I'm looking a bit high. Let's see. Oh no, we're looking good. This is going to work out. My landing gear's down. So let's see if we can land her. Can you already see the landing strip? It's really difficult. If you don't know that it's there, then it's extremely hard to see where the landing strip actually is. But you'll see in just a second if I actually am in the correct place. I believe so, though. There we are. Yep. And there's the landing strip straight ahead. And... Stopping the airplane. That worked. Wow. Well, welcome to what might be X-Plane 11's shortest landing strip. This is kind of a small strip here around Quartum River. And this kind of illustrates what I would imagine that the Polaris Amphib is used for in the real world. Kind of taking off and departing for a camping, camping trip with your best buddies out in the middle of nowhere. And just kind of landing on some sort of riverbank. As you can see, other people have done this with their airplanes already. You can kind of see the tracks that they've made. And let's see if we can take off as well. Not just land. Because landing is oftentimes the easier bit. Just going to kind of turn the airplane around here. Following the tire tracks of our predecessors. Oh. Bit more power there you are and aligning ourselves up with the runway if we can even call this a runway it's super super short okay so I'm I do want to show you one more thing I'm going to tune up the sound of the uh, Polaris Amphib so you guys can hear it you'll probably not be able to hear me anymore So you just heard the engine sound, I hope. That's a really well done engine sound, in my opinion. It's, it does sound awesome, and you can hear this pattering when it's at idle. It's really cool. All right, releasing the brakes. Pumping in full throttle a little quicker this time. And off we go. <laughs> Will you take a look at that? We made it into the air with more than enough runway to spare on what might very well be the shortest landing strip in X-Plane 11. That's pretty unique, isn't it? Wow. I don't think there's any other airplanes that can actually safely land there. You'd probably do it with some sort of super curb if you tune down the weight to the minimum value as possible. Actually, that might be something I want to try in a future flying vlog. So you can look forward to that, trying to land at that particular airstrip over and over again until it actually works out. Alright, there's one more airstrip I'm thinking about showing you guys if I can find it again. It's a bit further up and it's probably going to take me a while to get there as this is a very very slow airplane. So I'll see you in a minute. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We've climbed to almost 4,000 feet and cruised for quite a while now and what I'm about to land at, or at least attempt to land at, 
is going to be one of the most challenging airstrips you can actually find for X-Plane 11. You might be able to see it from here, it's this teensy tiny little spot of land right over there, right on the edge of that cliff. That is where we are headed. Now I'm not sure about this airplane service ceiling. I think we might actually already be stretching it. We're not too heavily loaded today, but we've got an average load of a normal pilot and well, probably a full tank of fuel. And there we are. That's our airstrip. If I'm seeing the correct clearing here, that is the planned airstrip. Okay, so my gear is extended. I hope. Yep, that's retracted and that's extended. And I've got the airstrip inside. So let's try and land there. Now, this is known as one of the most challenging airstrips in X-Plane. I believe there was a streamer. Um, I'm not sure who that was. I once saw on YouTube who said that this has to be the craziest place to land in X-Plane 11. And it really is an awesome, fun place to try and land with normal airplanes like the uh, Super Cub or maybe even the Quest Kodiak that could probably land there. But an airplane like this that is such a capable bush plane, I'm really interested in seeing just how well this little airplane here will perform. Okay, so I'm idling my throttle now. Oh wow, I'm super high, I think. Or am I? I don't know. It's very, very difficult to judge the altitude above this trip because you've got kind of this These super low trees. Yeah, we are way too high. I'm going around here. But you can see the airstrip. So that's pretty amazing. Kinda. Climbing, 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 climbing. And avoiding that mountain there at the same time. Alright, so I didn't manage it on the first try. I'll be right back with you in a few seconds for the second one. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to the second attempt. Oh boy. I'm just gonna kinda try and maintain my altitude right up to the threshold. If you can even call that the threshold of this landing strip. And we'll see if I can land and actually come to a stop in time there. Adding power to get over those last few trees. Oh boy. Wow, there's the kind of edge of the cliff. And there's, wow, there's the landing. Okay. Seems like we made it onto the ground and we made it to a stop at this very, very interesting airstrip. All right, let's take a look from that landing, of that landing from the external view. <laughs> Oof, that wasn't, it wasn't pretty, but I mean, it counts as a landing. I was very slow, but yeah, we made it onto the ground here. Let's see if we can take off again. I'm just going to exit replay mode real quick. And I will use the maximum amount of runway length here. Just turning around, turning around, turning around. This is actually, this is a part of the scenery and this is just beautiful. I mean, I really like the way this was made with this kind of airplane standing right over there indicating that this is indeed intended as a landing area and you've got kind of this one way down here which is probably slightly longer and then you've got this total sheer drop off the cliff as the second way of taking off. I'm going to add full power with full brakes and there goes 25, there's our minimum flying speed and we're airborne once again with enough reserve. I'm retracting the gear. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome 
to the Polaris Amphib. That is an amazing little airplane. And that takeoff there, that was <laughs> crazy. All right, just gonna turn past the mountain here. There's a fire watchtower, I believe, right up there. So I'm just gonna let the airplane kind of climb. And let's see if we can check that tower out, if that actually works. Now we are probably already pretty much at its maximum kind of flying altitude, so. Not sure how much higher than 4,000 feet we can go. Not sure what the design limit was of the Polaris Amphib. We're definitely staying fairly slow. We're not really increasing in terms of airspeed, hovering around that 30 knot mark. Yeah, we'll probably not make it up over that part of the hill, but you can kind of see the fire watchtower from here. Maybe if I circle around the mountain, we'll get high enough. You can see this kind of lighter tree area. That's where there's a helipad, which could, in theory, supply that fire watch tower 4,500 feet with a Polaris Amphib. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, now we finally climbed up high enough. There's kind of a watchtower over there, and we'll pass by the helipad in just a second. Let me see if we can see it. Yeah, that's the helipad, and that's the watchtower there. All right, ladies and gents. I'll be right back with you in a sec. And we'll try and land this at another airport that's a part of the Quantum River scenery, which would be Moe's Creek, and should be straight ahead. So I'll see you in a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are currently on approach to Moe's Field, or Moe's Creek Airport. Not entirely sure what the name was. In the Quadam River scenery, you can see the airport straight ahead. It's kind of that lighter patch of trees. There's a runway somewhere in there. And if I remember correctly, then our gear is already extended. Yes, it is. And we are currently descending towards the airfield and the corresponding runway for our straight in landing to Moe's Creek. All right. It actually was quite a deal to get down here from the high altitude. Once you get this plane to altitude, she will glide forever. So she's got a great glide ratio, I believe, and it's really, really hard to actually descend at a sensible pace in this airplane. Okay, so there's the runway straight ahead. I'm just going to try and land her, and then I'll give you a summary of what I think about this beautiful piece of flight simulation software. Alright, let's see... Oh boy, this is actually going to be really, really difficult to kind of get down in between those trees and to make it onto the ground within runway length. I'm just taking out a lot of my power here. I'm actually going to start to idle her. Let's see. Oh boy, now I'll have to kind of lower the nose to maintain that flying airspeed a bit. Okay, the good thing about this airplane is that you've really got all the runway you want. Because even on a runway like this one, she can and will land within like half the runway. I'm just gonna kinda glide over those last trees here and then I'll chop the throttle. And into the patch. Here we go, we're a bit fast, but that's not a problem. That means we've got a lot of energy left for a flare. Perfect, and let's see if we can get her to stop right on spot. This should be the parking area. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so we've made it on the ground. I'm going to kind of stop here in front of this little bench here where we can relax after this actually fairly long flight all the way from Quadam River Airport. I'm just going to kind of give you a quick overview over the airport. You've got this 
relatively small runway here. You've got Moose Creek down there. There's a few more bush strips right over there. And you've got the main Moose Creek kind of airport right here. And then you've got this little road going all the way up here. So this is a really cool little area to fly around in. All right. So talking about the aircraft, the Polaris Amphib, she's a really cool airplane. It's a fun little airplane. I think you saw that I was having a lot of fun trying out what airstrips you can land in and what airstrips are too short, maybe. And we found out that there are no airstrips that I know of that would be too short for this airplane. If you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments. I'd be interested to try that out. And it isn't the fastest cruiser, obviously, and it's not going to be a high-altitude IFR plane, obviously. But it is a really, really fun plane to kind of fly around with and to chill out and relax, and I love it. I like this plane. I like the way it's modeled. V-Sky Labs has done an awesome job. Once again, I tried out a lot of his other airplanes as well, and I like them all. I like his helicopters. I like his aircraft. They're pretty awesome. So, yeah. If you want to try this out, it's a really awesome plane to try out and kind of fly around in. I've had a lot of fun, and I'll be doing a lot of this flying in the future, so this is a really little awesome little airplane to try out and to fly around with, so yeah, I can only recommend this if you want to try out something different to the usual kind of airplane grind. In general, it's a fun airplane to try out. It does have its challenges though, it's really hard to get it to descend, and it's really kind of important that you manage your energy, your altitude, and your speed well, because you can kind of arrive at the airport and then you'll be too slow, or you can arrive and be too high and have a lot of gliding distance, but yeah, this is a really interesting airplane to kind of hone your low and slow flying skills. You can fly it with the bar in front of the pilot if you want to do that and test out a totally new way of flying an airplane, and those are all things that I really enjoy about this. So this is a new kind of experience brought to the flight simulator, and that's what I really like about it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me try to fly around with the Polaris Amphib. I wish you guys safe travels, blue skies, and many happy landings, and I'll see you next time in the next Flying Kayak Flying Vlog. So yeah, enjoy, and hope to see you soon. Safe travels, blue skies, and many happy landings.